If you're comfortable with waxing your skis, then now's probably a great time to start learning about how to work on the edges. Aside from the construction and the shape of the ski, the edge condition is the single thing that affects ski performance the most. It's the difference between a ski that chatters and slides on hard pack or ice and one that bites and carves. It's the difference between a ski that just doesn't feel right in the turn you can't get to engage or to release and one that engages the instant you want and releases the instant you want to, to lift you back into the next turn. Fortunately, it takes some of the same things as waxing, uh, a place that you can make a bit of a mess. Ski vice will save you hours and hours of headache. I cannot over-recommend the small expenditure of getting a proper ski vice for your skis. The first tool you're going to need is a file. A mill bastard file is the standard for working on skis. It's aggressive enough to cut the edges, but not so aggressive that it leaves a mess behind. Now there is a difference between the mill bastard you can get in the hardware store and one you order from a ski tuning website or a ski tuning retailer. The ones in the hardware store are fine, but they're made of a softer chromoly compared to the ones you can get for ski tuning. The difference is replacing the duller ones more often, whereas a small expenditure in a hardened ski file is well worth it. Diamond stones are a nice touch, fairly inexpensive for a set of four. They're what you'll use to maintain the edge through most of the year and remove any blemishes if you hit a rock. A panzer file is inexpensive, invaluable, and will literally last your skiing career. Emery cloth can almost take the place of a diamond file, but it's a great addition. This is what you'll use to polish and finish your edges most frequently. And lastly, something to make sure that you're cutting the edges and polishing the edges at a consistent angle and the angle you want. For the base, some files, ski files, come with a plastic sleeve that slips over the end and lifts that edge off the ski base slightly, giving you a one or two degree bevel. Those are okay, but for the small expenditure, I highly recommend a jig for holding your uh, base file to cut the base edges. It slides along the base, holds the file, gives you a nice uniform uh, bevel all the way along the base and will literally outlast you. And then one for the side edges. There's a few different styles and whatever works for you is best. You can get the fixed style that has, this is a 90 degree, you also have an 88 degree. You can get the style that uh, professional tuners use that uses a clamp to hold the file in place. Or you can get adjustable ones that have a range from 90 to 85 degrees. Now you would never cut a side edge at 85 degrees, even for slalom racing, but it is useful in one circumstance. We'll talk more about edge angles a little bit later, but for now, let's just talk about the stages of uh, sharpening and maintaining your edges. The first thing you want to keep in mind when working on your edges is you need to start from a true and plumb platform. What does that mean? Well, when you ski, you obviously spend more time on the outside of your skis than you do in the center. And the outside of your skis wears more. What that can lead to is a crowning in the base. And it's very subtle, but you can definitely see it with the naked eye. Now the problem with that is any tool that slides along the base, like a base edge guide or a side edge guide, is going to be rocked out of position by that crowning and give you a more aggressive angle than the guide is supposed to. You don't need a fancy true bar, but if you have one, that's awesome. Or if you'd like to invest in one, that's a fantastic idea. Really, have a look at your bases. Use something with a clean, straight edge. It can even be a metal ruler. And using a flashlight, work your way down the ski. And what you want to see is uniform light coming from underneath the bar. If you see dark in the center and light on the sides, that means your ski is crowned. If your ski is crowned, it's time to take it to a tuner for a base grind. You can flatten a base at home, but it's not something we're going to cover here. Assuming you have a nice flat base for your tool to ride on, there are really two phases to dealing with ski edges. You might think a file is the appropriate tool for touching your edges up all year, but really you should only be using a file at the beginning of the season and maybe once through the season, depending on how you look after your skis. Files are used to cut the edge to a specific angle. They're aggressive, they leave a pattern behind, but they do remove a lot of metal and they work quickly. So at the beginning of the season, after you have, if you have a new set of skis or if you have them stone ground, you set the bevel with a file. We're always going to start with the base edge and then work to the side edges. And we're always going to start with the coarsest cutter or coarsest file and work to the finest. The idea is to have a perfectly polished, smooth, uniform edge with no burrs, no nicks or anything like that. Now, obviously that's only going to be achieved by a World Cup racer or a NORAM racer. We're backcountry skiers, we're going to nick up our skis. So you eventually have some nicks and things, but the idea is to have a nice, smooth, consistent edge. Setting the base bevel. Using the base bevel guide and a file, 
Nice, even strokes. It doesn't matter whether you're tip to tail or tail to tip. I tend to work on the side opposite me and push with a file like this. And every time you get to the end of the ski, it's time to move the file a bit so you're not grinding filings back into the ski. Now I should say, in anything to do with ski maintenance, cleanliness is next to awesomeness. So after every single pass of the file, it's important to take a rag or a cloth and give the ski a wipe to remove any filing so they don't get pressed into the base or worse, waxed in. Move down one side, move the file, flip it over, switch sides, wipe the ski, go back down the other side. What you're feeling for and when you know when to stop is when you feel consistent resistance the whole way down. You're not catching anywhere, you're not cutting a whole lot. Once you get a nice uniform feeling all the way along, there's nowhere all of a sudden it digs and then it doesn't. It may still cut a little bit, but it's a uniform feeling all the way along. That edge is done. On both sides, on both skis. Next up for the bases, we want to remove the marks that we created by filing. And we do that with a diamond stone, or some people use a honing stone, either or. Place it, hold it firmly, and you're just going to work up and down. And the good thing about a diamond file is it works in both directions. Polish up and down the edges a few times. You're just trying to remove the marks that you would have left with the file, any cutting marks. Wipe the ski base clean. And then the final step, whether you use a diamond file or a regular file, is to use some 400 and then some 800 grit sandpaper. And now what I'm doing is I'm polishing the edge. You want almost a mirror finish. So using 400 and then switch to 800. Always cleaning between nice smooth strokes. What you're going for, like I said, is that nice polished edge. If you're filing, if uh, your skis aren't new, you've skied on them, You've obviously hit rocks. At some point in the season, you might have nicks and things. And what nicks feel like when you're using a file is that the file will be cutting and then all of a sudden it'll skip over a little spot. You'll feel different resistance. What that is, is hardened steel. When the edge hits a rock, it deforms and it creates heat and the heat hardens the steel harder than the file can cut. If you find one of those spots on your skis using the bevel guide and a diamond stone because the diamond stone will cut the hardened steel. Find the spot and just work back and forth across it until the resistance feels uniform. And then switch back to a file. Now the side edges. This is when it's really advantageous to have the skis in a vise. The difference with a side bevel guide is that you pull towards you rather than push away. If you push away with a side bevel guide with a file or a diamond stone, there's a chance that it could slide off and you'll expose the outside of your thumb to a nicely polished sharp edge. And let me tell you from experience what that does to thumbs. You always want the file pointing in the cutting direction, so I'm pulling towards me, the file points this way. Tighten it down or clamp it with uh, a thumb clamp. And same thing. Nice short overlapping strokes. All the way down until you get uniform resistance. One way you can tell that you've filed or that you've cut your side edges appropriately is to take a marker and at a couple of spots along the ski, make the edge black. And if you're only removing the marker that's closest to the top sheet, you need to keep working. If it's removing the marker uniformly, you're perfect and it's time to move on to the next step. Same with the base edges. We're gonna to move to a diamond file. A few strokes up and down, nice overlapping strokes. Again, we're trying to remove the marks that we left with the cutting file. And then lastly, polishing with emery cloth. 400 and then 800. Unless you've had major deformities or work done on the ski by a stone grinder, emery cloth, honing stone, or diamond file is all that should touch the edges. You've set the angle. You're just polishing it now. Personally, when I come home from a day of skiing, if it's not too late, I usually take a little bit of 800 grit and a file and a bevel guide, dry the edges, whip up and down them once, it polishes them, and they're all set for next time. One quick note, you may be wondering why I suggested the Panzer file. The Panzer file is this very, very aggressive file. There's a couple of things that the Panzer file is very good for. If you look down the edge of a ski, you might notice, on a new ski at least, that the sidewall is flush with the edge. Now if you picture, if you're trying to get a file to ride like this to create a bevel, it's just going to butt into the sidewall. You may notice this when you're filing because the file won't feel like it's cutting metal, or it will come out of the tool and have a streak the color of the sidewall. 
With the new ski, if you're going to put side bevel in, and I highly recommend you do, it's important to cut the sidewalls. You can get fancy tools to do it, but I like to do it at hand, by hand with a panzer file. Now this is one time this adjustable edge bevel guide is kind of useful. You would never set your side edges to an 85 degree bevel, but it works well for cutting sidewalls. You're just trying to remove enough sidewall material that the file can sit at the proper angle. If you don't have a, an edge bevel guide that goes to 85 degrees, it's pretty easy to do by hand. I prefer to push when I'm doing it by hand, and I just use the feeling of resistance to know when I'm cutting enough. It's going to be a lot easier than the edges because the sidewalls are usually plastic or composite. Start easy. You can always file more. You can't replace filed sidewall. What about detuning, you might ask? You may have heard this term. You may have heard of gummy stones. You may have heard of people detune the tip and tail. This is a controversial subject, to say the least. My experience, based on 30 years of tuning and skiing, is that when shaped skis became prevalent, that is ones with either variable side cut radius or uh, parabolic side cut radius, the need to detune tips and tails became greatly diminished. In fact, non-existent. Detuning tips and tails was far more important when we had circular radius side cuts. Some people still like to detune tips and tails. It is absolutely a skier's preference. But what it's worth doing is sharpening your skis, polishing the edges, trying them with sharp tips and tails, and having a gummy stone or something like that in your pocket to just give... I don't even have a gummy stone. That's how little I use them. But the same can be done with a diamond file wrapped in emery cloth. You're not trying to blunt the edges, just take the sharpness out of them. You be the judge. Whether you like detuned tips and tails depends on your ski, on your experience, on your strength, on your skiing type, all of those kind of things. Personally, I love the feeling of sharp tips and tails. When we talk about ski edges, we talk about two distinct measurements. Base bevel is measured in degrees off of zero, where zero is an edge that's perfectly parallel with a flat base. It is possible to ski with zero degrees of base bevel, but it's not recommended. Adding a half a degree or even a degree of base bevel will firstly allow your skis to slide more freely with a bit of surfy feel before the edge engages and allow you to get the ski up on edge more before the ski connects and bites into the snow. All this translates into a better feeling ski and a better turning ski. Like base edges, side edges are measured in degrees, but degrees off of 90, where 90 degrees represents a perfectly perpendicular side edge to the base. Although we don't talk about it in these terms, the base bevel and the side bevel add up to give you a total angle of the edge, and that does affect performance. A sharper edge, one that's less than 90 degrees, is very aggressive. They bite really hard, but they're very hard to get to release from turns, and they wear more quickly because of the more acute edge. By learning to work on your own edges, not only will you know more about ski performance and tuning than 99.9% .9 of skiers on the hill or even in the backcountry, you'll take ownership of how your skis perform.